Today, I am bringing to you a dear friend of mine, somebody whose life I enjoy getting to watch as she evolves and embodies each new incarnation of self in a way that is so bright. It's kind of a, it's like the end of a firework, I feel like. Jaina, that's what you are to me. It's not that like big explosive like shock. It's the, it's the beauty afterwards. And so I'm excited to share Shana with all of you today because she is a person that goes deep within her own inner work and then shares that sparkle with us, shares the glimmer, shares the permission slip that she has become for herself and for others in this life. So welcome, welcome into this space today. What a sweet intro. <laughs> you make me blush. <laughs> Let me tell you, before, before I start to ask you questions, I want to yeah, share yeah. something with you that I don't know that I've ever shared with you before. And I think it's useful for everybody listening. Shana and I kind of first met virtually before we met in person. So we live like in pretty close proximity to each other. I do get to see Shana in person, but we met virtually on Instagram first. We were kind of like introduced through the weird wild web and people that we're connected with. And Shana would send me these like video messages. And this was years ago when Instagram kind of first got the feature of being able to send a video message to people. And I just remember nobody else had ever done that before. So I would send a message and Shana would like reply with a full video, full face, full embodiment of her answer, showing me what she was doing, just like going about her day, like she'd be in the car or shopping or whatever she was doing. And I just thought like, wow, here is this like absolute legendary being, not just being in like polite conversation, but like welcoming me straight into her world and being like, we're going to be friends. I'm going to share all of me with you. Here's my world. Here's my dog. Here's what I'm eating for dinner. And I just... <laughs> I just really loved that. And I share that because it's so easy to make a quick connection with people if you live your life vulnerably and if you're willing to be mm. seen. And so I'm wondering if you could share, if you could sprinkle some wisdom on anybody that is longing to make close connections with people or anyone who has that desire for closer friendships but struggles because they can't kind of like bridge the gap between where they are and being able to connect with others how how is it that you find mm. it so easy to show up in just full embodiment of yourself with people you've just met I feel like it's never been easy and I feel like anyone that's like this would also agree in saying that and I feel like it really comes with actually knowing who you are and actually accepting who you are too and I feel like we talk about like loving yourself um and all this sort of you know bullshit loving yourself way of things when there's really like deeply knowing yourself and accepting yourself for who you are because we love our friends in a way that's like we love them for all parts of them we don't just love the good bits we love every part even the shit parts and that's why we love them and I feel like we need to almost like transfer that same thing onto ourselves if we're looking for that deeper feeling with someone else Mm. I feel like that goes for like so many different things, like every part of your life. I feel like, um, you know, those people that you meet and you feel like you've known them forever and like it's just an instant connection. It's because like I feel it at work every now and again with random people that I'm like, I feel like I've known you forever, but I have not. But it's only because in that moment, both of us are just purely being ourselves and purely meeting each other in that same vibe. We're not trying to look for how we can meet each other. Mm. So true. I feel like, you know, unconditional love and self-love are, you know, bubblegum spirituality terms, yeah. like over -chewed at this point. And I think until you're willing to have faced the stories of your life that you haven't told your therapist, you haven't told your best friend, the most disgusting, gritty, gross, shameful parts of your being, until you have been willing to sit with those parts of yourself, develop compassion for those parts of yourself mm. then you begin to kind of like begin the journey of being able to be a person that embodies all of who they are and experiences self-love and I know that is something I don't know whether you have been to the depths of your darkness and dance with all your demons but I know that you're a person that has very openly uh, shared and spoken of her suffering of her turmoil of her grief of her struggle is that something that you kind of regularly do within yourself 
is dancing in the dark and yes <laughs> can you speak to that I, I knew that mm. was, I knew that was your answer so. mm, absolutely well I feel like that's the part in like because that's how we almost like you know get to know someone deeper too is by like what's been your story or what's your struggle or what's you know what makes you up and we all have those parts so I think it's just it's part of the whole thing of meeting some like beating yourself is meeting those parts of yourself and actually being willing it's don't get me wrong I say that like it's easy it's fucking not <laughs> like it's absolutely not and it's it takes a lot of bravery within yourself to have the softness to approach them too I think that's probably the biggest word that I think of when like meeting those darkness meeting the darkness in yourself is that it's it requires a lot of compassion like you said but that softening in like knowing that that's okay like you wouldn't approach someone else the same way I don't know how we like <laughs> put that into words but it's purely a feeling isn't it of meeting yourself in that way offering the same kindness that we so readily offer to others right mm, mm. I know in your work recently you've really kind of like stepped further into your capacity and your leadership in being able to support women to do this for themselves can you speak to the fact that this isn't work, even though it is so unique to each of us, even though it's so deeply personal, this isn't work that we should be doing alone and it's not work that we have to do alone. Could you speak to the importance of advocating for yourself and potentially the first step being finding somebody who can walk alongside you as you do this? Mm, I feel like when you invite someone to hold space for you in like learning parts of yourself and seeing parts of yourself, um they've got eyes that you don't see it's like you know when someone else is talking to you and it feels like you just see all of their stuff before they ever do and I think it's like with the saying goes like you can't see the picture if you're in the frame like it's the same again with your own stuff like you you can't see your own stuff and you know we can have self-awareness but I feel like having having enrolled someone else to purely like do that for you to receive like it's completely like builds on that whole feeling so I feel like coming back into what we we're saying about you know having someone there or having a coach or having a mentor or whatever you want to call it like I think that's the best investment you can make in yourself in that journey and meeting who you are for sure it's so necessary <laughs> I feel like we live in such yeah. an individualistic culture that it's almost been like a uh, conditioned or put on us that if we are asking for support it means there's something wrong or broken, mm. fragmented do you want to speak to that a little mm. I was going to say as soon as you said that even like th that saying alone is so um it's so cliche oh, it's so it's you're not broken to get help and oh it's okay like I feel like it makes me want to vomit hearing those things because it makes it worse like the whole idea of enrolling someone and it's not even about like enrolling someone to like quite literally be a like sad story case <laughs> like these can be um like for instance I used to think that about having someone hold space and then it moved into like having someone there even if I was fine to then actually challenge like the parts of me that were like on fire and like things were going good and like deepen into it more so I guess like that's the deepening that we're sort of talking about here I feel is like when yes you can have your darkness and your sad story and all that and we all have our version of that but actually like the deepening of yourself and leaning into that through like a guide it's just like that's a whole other like explosion of meeting yourself right the but. audacity the audacity is always <laughs> comes through to let yourself be seen and held and supported and encouraged by someone um, that is calibrated to their own kind of uh, knowing of self and to have somebody speak words of encouragement to you and through you and to not have to have that part of you that is like, are they being sarcastic right now? Are they just trying to be nice right now? Are they just pumping me up right now? Are they just saying that because I'm paying them? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, that, that, that's the next challenge. There's like levels to this shit when it comes to being supported. Mm. Um, I, and I share that because sometimes people think that if they're not being fully expressed or they are suffering in some way or there's something that they want to manifest for themselves, just getting a coach would be the answer. 
Mm. And it's not as simple. It's not like you pay somebody money and then all your problems are solved. I wish, God, and I wish oh. it was that easy, right? It's always up to the individual to do the work. And I think the best coaches are the ones that continue to be coached and supported and guided by other people and haven't pedestaled themselves. Um, mm. and are still very much in the experience of their own evolution and their own growth and their own shedding. Can you speak to the ways that you call in support for yourself and you advocate for support for yourself throughout the week just so anybody listening can just be inspired by the way that mm. strong women, powerful women, uh, embodied women are doing this for themselves? I feel like a lot of these different things came from, um, like from these guides and from these mentors in my life. Like you take little bits from everyone and um you know, feel what aligns to yourself and make it your own. Like often um, that's looked different on different parts of my journey too. Like it's looked like, you know, a heavily masculated <laughs> workout schedule or it's looked like, um, you know, really strict routines. But then it's also gone the complete opposite of now, like completely softening and learning to like ask what it is that I do need each day, whether that w- would be leaning into journaling or leaning into like different books, Um or potties like this um but yeah particularly like recently I think enrolling um in a a business coach into my business has been like amazing um purely just to have like to receive from someone for just one area of my life mostly I've had um like a holistic sort of counselor like in the background who's just been amazing amongst everything and she's been quite general for all parts of like what healing looks like but when we're talking external, like and having different pockets of your life that you can like build up, that's been like pivotal in changing so many things. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, along the journey, like it's looked like different things to support myself. But I think the thing that remains true the whole time is definitely like making space for myself to like, yeah, journal or be in my thoughts. So every time it just like, I feel refreshed and it brings up all the new ideas and things like that. But only when I remember that, like creating time for me to do that is the thing that brings it. It doesn't just like happen in amongst all the doing. Mm. Final question for our chat today. What is something that you once didn't understand that you're so glad that you now have clarity around or through or with? Mm. That is such a good question. (laughs) I feel like having grace for yourself. Like, like I said earlier, this is like the biggest theme for me right now is like letting be what is and like letting that fold out how I need it to be at the time. But I think like not having such like high expectations of self that I actually can't reach ever (laughs) and actually bringing it down like within my reach and having grace for like every single part of me has brought so much clarity in how I actually move forward in my life. I feel like it used to be so like um, like the shoulds and the like having it all and knowing what to do and like being on point was such a like a thing that I had in my mind and actually having the clarity of knowing that it doesn't have to be that way and it can totally be a way that's like here's your permission to soften into yourself and where you're at right now but also like creating, you know, the word creating like expectations for yourself that are actually reasonable Mm. and create challenge for you it's just so much better and there have been the recent shifts lately so I feel like it's so nice to be able to like pull on just recent clarity and know that that's been groundbreaking but I think just knowing that we internally have everything that we need and know like and we end up remembering I think that's the best thing that I've learned across this whole thing I think it can be really powerful sometimes for our own growth to uh, bring the structure of what we're trying to create or what we're trying to hold in to not expect so much for ourselves. So to bring it into a tighter structure, with, which might feel like it's limiting in some way, like people mm. have this grand vision for yourself. But I think it can be really Don't helpful. get me wrong. The grand visions are so good, right? Like, Sure, but mm. I also think bringing in a tighter structure for the time being 
lowering your expectation of self, for lack of a better word, actually allows you to master whatever it is you are doing, wherever you are at, and then play in the space of freedom within that. Yes, yes. So I'll give a very specific example. I'm doing my somatic healing certification and there are very specific moves uh, linked to certain emotions that we're being taught. And the guidance has been learn to master the moves, know the move, and then you'll feel confident to play within the moves. You only feel self-conscious and you only feel stuck and you only feel like it's tricky when you don't actually know the base move. So the advice is like master the move as it is within the structure given and then play and then Mm -hmm. freedom. And I think in our life, always thinking that the next thing, pushing ourselves to do something more, something different uh, and feeling like that's going to make us feel more free within ourselves, I think it's a bit of a trick. And I think mm. that having the discernment and the distinction between whether where we are is not good for us and we actually have to get the fuck out of whatever we're in or understanding that, no, no, I have to ground myself. I have to be here. I have to learn how to master whatever it is that is going on around me, through me, to me, as me, and find freedom within the structure of that right now. That's the gift that's been given. That's the opportunity that's been given. Does that mm. make sense? You've worded that so beautifully. Mm. I completely agree. (laughs) I feel like even like coming off the back of this podcast too, like it's awesome to feel inspired too by what other people are saying. But when we go and like completely put ourselves into something to do, you know, say for instance, like we've mentioned, um, you know, journaling or creating space for yourself. It's like, I'm going to do this every day for a week, whatever. Like it's not it's not going to work. Like we'll just drop it there. (laughs) Like until you like lean into how that feels for you, what that looks like for you and play in it. And what's the relationship with that thing. And then I love that you've worded that so beautifully. Mm. (laughs) Can you please tell us an exciting thing that's happening for you right now and where people can come and witness you in the exploration and sharing of that? Thank you. Um, At the moment, as I mentioned, like working with a business coach for my business for the first time, um, I'm starting to look at expanding some of my offerings. So I'm super excited about how this is going to look. So I currently um, hold space for pretty, it's, it's not just like only to business owners. So I am a business coach, but also for, you know, people that are looking to do better for themselves and create better for themselves. Um, so yeah, we're looking at, you know, just creating offerings that are suited to, um, I guess, sorry, we'll rewind a bit. <laughs> where, um, where my offerings sit in is expanding yourself. And that's where I'm looking to, you know, create different things as part of that for each person to expand themselves, whether they are in business or they're looking to you know, expand their socials on their business or even just on their own personal journey. I think all of it's so relevant. And yeah, I'm literally looking forward to um, creating more for people to access. Beautiful. And where can they connect with you? Um, they can connect with me at Evolu Collective on Instagram. We can um, tag it on here. Yeah. <laughs> it will be in the show notes but it's also lovely for us to kind of just hear it and have that planted as a seed within us too thank you thank so you much Anna. for your beautiful <laughs> time for your beautiful energy i appreciate you so much and i genuinely do encourage anybody that's listened to this that isn't connected with Shayna to go over and just plug yourself into her energy it will be well worth it thank, thank you me. yes i look forward to it <laughs> thank you, my love